Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. The Indiana Wesleyan University volleyball team has won the Crossroads League Tournament Championship and now moves on to host the opening round of the National Championship Tournament. The Wildcats faced an unlikely opponent in the league championship game as number five seed St. Francis knocked off the number one seed, Marion University Knights, to make it to that championship game against the Wildcats. Well, in the first set, the Wildcats started off controlling the game, taking a six-point lead, which then they gave right back to the Cougars, who were able to tie it up at 13 apiece. But then the Wildcats quickly regained control of the game and took the first set by a final score of 25 to 19. And then in the second set, St. Francis scored the first point, but that would be their only lead of the set. It was pretty much all Wildcats after that. IW went on to take the second set as well, 25 to 15. Well then, in the third set, the Cougars kept it close early on, taking the lead a couple of times, but the Wildcats poured on the scoring, taking a 10 point lead at one point before going on to win set number three, 25 to 17. The Wildcats win it in three. Tay Thomas had 10 kills and two blocks on the night. Emily Workman, 19 assists and five digs. Morgan Miller, 13 kills and two blocks as well. well now joining us to talk about this uh, Crossroads League Championship win is the head coach of the Wildcats, Coach Candace Motes. And Coach, before we talk about this, I got to read this stat because it just jumped out at me. Okay. 15 of the last 16 years, if I read it right, you guys have been in a conference championship game. You've won 13 conference uh, tournament titles in 16 years. Uh, but it probably never gets old, does it? No, I, I, I wouldn't say that it ever does. I mean, we're grateful every year, yeah. you know, that we get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But um, it it's something about working really hard all mm -hmm. season that you get that opportunity, and mm -hmm. that makes it worth it. When we talked a little bit or mentioned just a moment ago, a little bit of a surprise that you had the championship game at home, and certainly that was great. Marion had had an outstanding regular season. They, yeah. of course, won the regular season championship. They'll go uh, on to the national tournament as well. But St. Francis came into this match playing their best volleyball of the year. They were really on fire, weren't they? Yeah, they were like a freight train. It was yeah. kind of making me nervous a mm -hmm. little bit because, you know, that wild card team that, mm -hmm. you know, they start tasting the wins mm -hmm. and they haven't been in this opportunity for a long time. And so, you know, you get an extra surge of yeah. energy when you know that this is something new for you that you could do and make history for your program. You know, um, the other thing about this game, um, after a little bit of delay, your team was able to kind of gather themselves after a little bit of emotional moment, but then maybe played the best three sets of I, the year maybe I, I don't know I would say that Raj I you know we have said that we, yeah. we felt like this was a breakout game mm -hmm. for us and I've, I've not seen them play that together and focused it it was a really neat moment for our program mm -hmm. and kind of encouraged us to kind of keep going well as we take a look now more in depth at some of these highlights Emily Workman a, a beautiful back set there off the bump I mean she had she had an outstanding game setting the, setting the ball tonight to the hitters or yeah. that night. I mean, just did a great job. I, you know, I was so proud of Em because, you know, it, it was an emotional moment for Em at the beginning of the game, you know, um, some, some health concerns with her dad and, and then, you know, to just pull herself together mm -hmm. and to just really put what mattered, mm -hmm. you know, like it, after we knew her dad was okay, that's mm -hmm. what really mattered, but then to just really put her teammates in front yeah. of her own emotional feelings, you know, was really cool. You know, one of the things in this first set, especially I thought was critical is, you know, jumped out to the lead and there, there was a great set to the middle there and great, but boy, we'll talk about her a little bit later, but there were some really long volleys in this game. Yeah. And it seemed like even though St. Francis was scrapping and clawing and you guys were, I thought you came out on top of almost every single one of those long volleys. And yeah. Those are great momentum boosts. Right, right. It's it's a surge of energy when you fight and fight and fight and you take away somebody's great efforts. It's like winning the first set, you know? You just get that those little moments in mm. matches that kind of surge you through and keep you going and definitely long rallies are a real just momentum boost. Well now we're in the second set and maybe in the second set I think is probably when Morgan Miller started to come on a little bit stronger for you and you know 
They fed her often, got her involved in the match, and boy, she was, she was on, just on point that night, wasn't she? Yeah, you know, we, we kind of wondered if they were gonna like commit block on our right sides, because our right sides are by far one of the best two right sides in the conference for sure, yeah. and even NEI, they've made their mark. And uh, we were a little nervous that they were really gonna go after our right sides, but when we saw that they were treating everybody the same, we were like feed the right sides and, and Morgan never disappoints. Well, now we're into the third set. We saw Tay just a minute ago. Boy, she really had some, yep. some big hits that night as well. But, you know, in the middle, in that third set, especially uh, uh, Graber, she had some huge blocks yeah. in there. And she was, you know, if a defensive player can be on fire, she was. I yeah. mean, she was just really in the zone. You know, it, it was kind of funny because I'm, I'm on Megan all the time about her blocking because she, <laughs> she gets so tight and she yeah. pulls herself off the net a lot. And so, you know, it's just been a constant just going after her. And it was kind of funny because the girls were like, well, coach, you know, it kind of paid off to be yelling at Morgan all season mm -hmm. or Megan yeah. all season, you know. But she just had a break. I was so happy for her. Well, now in the third set, um, you know, St. Francis scrapping here, trying to stay alive. But uh, right here is the match point. And it, you know, of yeah. all the big hits <laughs> the night, that one rolls down the net. And Morgan had some huge kills. And maybe yeah. kid with her a little bit about that <laughs> one. But hey, that's the way that, uh, you know, the match ends. But yeah. um, big victory another conference championship and more importantly now you know gets you that second automatic bid to the national yeah. tournament and now you get to host that opening round national tournament right. game here on saturday against iuk a team you beat early in the season but that was a long time ago yeah. when you played those guys wasn't yeah it? it was about the middle of august when we yeah. played them so there's a lot that can happen in on both teams yeah. when you get to this point in time in the season and they're definitely not a team we're going to over, overlook. They're a very, very good team. They're 30 and 9, so yeah. they well, had to have done something right. Well, they kind of did you a favor last year in that they went on the road. I think it was maybe out to Kansas and upset a, a top 20 ranked team yeah. in this match. So you can tell your young ladies, hey, you take this team lightly, right. they'll upset you. You know, they're, they're that. And, and it's kind of that. You know, it's kind of a weird dynamic, too, mm -hmm. because, you know, my assistant coach's daughter is on the other team. <laughs> and so it's just like this, you know, you, you're like firing up and you're getting mm -hmm. excited. But then on the other side of the coin, you know, mm -hmm. the Elsons are on the other side, too. And so we're just kind of like trying to gear up for it. But, you know, it's it's one of those kind of weird dynamics that we have to work through. Well, last thing I wanted to mention again, um, if you can get the victory on mm -hmm. Saturday, and you gotta get that one first, then it would be on to Sioux City, Iowa for right. uh, the, the final round there. And of course that would certainly be the goal, and, yeah. and uh, um, to make another trip back there would be huge for this team. Yeah, it? you know, I, I would love the fact to be able to take those seven <coughs> freshmen mm -hmm. and show them, hey, this is where we're heading, mm -hmm. you know? And so like next year when we add seven more freshmen to our team, you know, and we have mm -hmm. freshmen and sophomores, basically, mm -hmm. the freshmen that are gonna be there this year, if we get there, mm -hmm. we'll be able to say, this is what we're shooting for, you exactly. know, and it kind of gives them a visual. So I'm hoping for that case that we'll get there and for our six seniors. Yeah, for sure. You know, they're, they're worked hard all year, and so it'd be great for them, you know, so we'll do our best. We hope that it'll happen, go our way. All right, well, Coach, thanks for stopping by. Again, congratulations on another championship. Thank you. All right, well, as we said, next up is the Crossroads League, well, excuse me, is the NAI opening round game where the Wildcats will host IU Kokomo Saturday at 1 o'clock. That is Saturday, November the 5th, 1 p.m. All right, well, don't go away. When we come back, we're going to talk some ladies basketball with the head coach of the Wildcats, Ethan Whaley. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. We're going to talk some men's basketball really quickly as the guys travel to Richmond, Indiana on Tuesday night to face the ninth-ranked IU East Red Wolves. Well, it was a hard-fought battle, but the men lost by a single point. Final score, 80-79. to 
Well, now we're going to talk some women's basketball where the ladies were back in action in Luck Arena. On Tuesday night, the Wildcats faced off against the Brescia Bearcats. The Wildcats shot 44% from the field while holding the Bearcats to just 24%. Indiana Wesleyan got off to a quick start with layups from Nicole Ignashik. Then Anna Imhoff and Katie Key, they were able to dribble, penetrate, get in the paint, and then found each other on the three-point line where they connected on some big threes. The Wildcats took advantage of their height and found opportunities to score in the post. Well, then in the second half, Michaela Bailey went three for three from behind the arc. Elena Edgewell worked hard inside the post and got some big baskets as well. The Lady Wildcats cruised through the game with a final score of 78-53. to Junior Nicole Ignashik led the way with 18 points and 11 rebounds. Another junior, Katie Key, had 13 points to go along with four rebounds. Sophomore Elena Edgewa came off the bench and ended the night with nine points and three rebounds. Well, Saturday, November the 11th, the Lady Wildcats faced off against the Blue Devils of Lawrence Tech. It was a very difficult, hard-fought game, but the Wildcats came away victorious after 40 minutes. Strong moves came from inside Carly Lang and Michaela Martini. Katie Key also hit a big three to uh, put the Wildcats ahead in this ball game, followed by an Anna Imhoff three uh, to take the lead back. It was a back and forth matchup, lots of lead changes in this one. The Wildcats would win on a two, uh, from Carly, two free throws from Carly Lang. Big free throws down the stretch for the Wildcats. The final score in that game, Indiana Wesleyan 57, Lawrence Tech 56. Well, joining me now, Talk about all this basketball. Is the head coach of the Wildcats, Ethan Whaley, and coach, uh, in a moment, we're going to take a look at some highlights from that Brescia game, go more in depth there, but let's back up. We talked about Lawrence Tech. I want to talk about even the game before that because you played uh, uh, Madonna University on Friday night of the Witter Classic. Then Saturday, Lawrence Tech, two different ball games. I mean, one was a little more high scoring against Madonna. The other one a little bit more low scoring against Lawrence Tech, Lawrence Tech, but to me at least I thought maybe the key was in both those games coming down the stretch you hit big free throws. Yeah, yeah, you know it's something that people keep saying this team is resilient, you mm -hmm. know, and, and uh, I think I think in both games we kind of dug ourselves a little bit of a hole, mm -hmm. but you know we were able to battle back. I was proud of our girls. Obviously we were led by Brittany Washington mm -hmm. Friday night had a big yeah. 20 points. She she was just living in the lane. I think she might have went 10 for 10 from the free throw yeah. line. Um, and then this, the second night, obviously, Brittany and Anna and, and Martini were big, but you mentioned it, Carly Lang mm -hmm. down the stretch hit some big free throws. And uh, coming from a sophomore, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's really big for our team. And in that game where uh, Anna Imhoff got injured, came back the last minute and made a big pass to Carly Lang. Well, taking a look at this Brescia uh, game, one of the things I loved here early, obviously you are working inside, uh, work inside the Nicole Ignacek, which opened up the outside, but Maybe Nicole did as good a job as we've seen all season in terms of finishing at the basket. Yeah, yeah, you know, she, uh, I think she was, she only missed three shots down low, and, and that's, that's big for her, obviously, from a confidence mm -hmm. standpoint. Because uh, everybody else on our team and our program knows that she's, a, she's somebody we want down low in the post with the ball uh, every time we can, and, and just for her to be able to feel confidence from finishing that well, that's, that's going to be big for us moving forward. You know, we saw, and we talked about moments ago, but we saw Anna get inside off the dribble, find Katie. Katie got it back to Anna. And then, you know, Brittany, I don't know, maybe if you have anyone that finishes around the basket better than Brittany does, especially off the dribble. Yeah, Brittany, Brittany's so strong, you yeah. know, and she's obviously a senior who knows how to use her body well. She's, that's kind of her game, and mm -hmm. she wants to bang around down low a little bit and, and use her strength and kind of, kind of play with you a little bit, if you will. So she's she's been huge. These last few games, her confidence has really stepped up. Uh, nice both feet from, up, at, excuse me. No, no, I was just gonna say both leading our team, yeah. but also just finishing around the rim. You know, great feeds there to a nice cut there by Katie Key. And, you know, good balance going inside and outside. Yeah, and that, that was the key. You know, we, we like shooting threes, but we want to get them off with paint touches and ball yeah. reversals and, and make the defense guard us a little bit. And, man, I was really happy for the second unit. Yeah. We had Elena Adedjua going mm -hmm. inside and Michaela yeah. Bailey on the outside. It was it was a lot of fun fun to watch these guys. Yeah, you know, we talked before the show, you know, that first one, Michaela comes in, hits the three, and everyone's excited. Well, she got a couple more looks. I think she was three for, three for four. Mm -hmm. She might have missed one, yeah. but it was no fluke. She worked hard in the summer 
to improve her shot. Yeah, you know, one thing we talk about, our theme for the year is discipline leads to freedom, and, and I think Michaela Bailey showed us good of an example of what that looks like as anybody. You know, yeah. she put the work in all season. She disciplined, or I'm sorry, all summer. She put the discipline yeah. in, and now she's shooting with freedom, knowing it's going in because she put so many hours in. When you talked about uh, Elena Edgewa, I, I like that she got in there, played physical around the post, but also played, you know, didn't rush things. Sometimes you see players, they get their opportunity, and maybe they rush things. She, she took her time, made some good post moves, and finished around the basket. Yeah, that's been a big emphasis for us. Coach Chandler's uh, our, our post coach and our position coach, and, and that's something we've really honed in on is, is just take your time, be patient, go up strong. And, and obviously her instruction and the girls are, are uh, buying in and, mm -hmm. and they're executing what we're talking about. Three-point shooting in this game, 11 of 24. 46%, I imagine you'll take that all season long. All day long. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Um, so maybe some of that is getting good shots. Some that Maybe, I don't know if they were flying out and defending you as hard as they could, but sometimes I even think a wide open three is maybe a little more difficult to hit. Yeah, you know, it, 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 a lot of it we talk about is situational. You mm -hmm. know, how, how many ball reversals have we gotten? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it one pass? What have we done the previous three or four possessions? Mm -hmm. How many paint touches? Um, and so, so that's something we're still growing in, but I really like the quality looks we got based on they were coming off paint touches, kickouts, mm -hmm. uh, or, or transition threes that, you know, we, we gladly take those as well. Let's talk about what's coming up. You head down to Kentucky, uh, down to Asbury, Shawnee State on Friday, Asbury on Saturday. Um, I know Asbury defeated Indiana once in last year. Uh, might have been an overtime game, but Shawnee State traditionally a very strong program. So you got two pretty – Pretty uh, good opponents ahead of you this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Friday nights who were focused on first at Shawnee yeah. State. They're number five in the country in NAI yeah. Division One. They, they, uh, <clears throat> I believe, won 31 games last year. They yeah. returned five players from that team, five starters from that team, mm -hmm. and so uh, we don't take them lightly. They are really, really good. Mm -hmm. They're averaging uh, 85 plus a game, and, and they shoot at a very efficient clip. So we better come in with a, a mm -hmm. gritty mentality that that we've we've built up, and uh, we need to continue that this weekend. All right. Well, Coach, congratulations on some big wins in Lucky Arena. As we said, coming up for the Lady Wildcats, they travel to Asbury, Kentucky for the Asbury Tournament first game against Shawnee State. That game will be at 2 p.m. on Friday, November the 17th. Then on Saturday, the 18th, they take on the home team, the Asbury College squad out of Kentucky. That game is at 4 p.m. in Wilmore. Well, when we come back, we'll get a poolside look at the new IWU swim team, so stick around. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. The Wildcat swim team competed in their third dual meet competition of the season in North Manchester, Indiana on November the 11th. They lost their matchup against Franklin College by a score of 155 to 70, but they were able to take care of Manchester University 167 to 55. That brings their dual meet record to two and two on the season. The top times for the meet both came from freshman Emma Travis. She finished first in the 50 yard freestyle with a time of 25.05, and then she finished first in the 100 freestyle with a time of 56.15. The Wildcats also had a NAI qualifying time in the 400 free relay. The team of Grace Fredrickson, Madison Wickholm, Emma Travis, and Kayla Hirschberger had a time of 4.18.38. Now up next for the Swimming Wildcats, they head to Olivet Nazarene University in Illinois for the Toby Tiger Invitational that will be over November 5th, excuse me, 17th and 18th. Well, in just three months, the swimming team has gone from the new kids on the block to the real team, a real team, traveling the state and representing Indiana Wesleyan University. Rebecca Schrad tells us about this group of young ladies turned into a unit very quickly because of their character and their mission to be on top. Climbing on a bus in the middle of the school day is nothing new for IWU student athletes. Neither is watching the fields go by while you try try to get in a little studying. But your teammates don't exactly make study time easy. We dance on bus rides, we dance in the locker room, we dance on deck. <laughs> All of this is the typical life of a college athlete, losing another weekend for the team. 
Except for these young ladies, it's the first time for everything. First trips, first contests, and at the destination, first water. This is the first swimming team in Indiana Wesleyan history. And if that legacy is slowing them down, they sure aren't showing it. Like, it's still, like, surreal that we're the first and, like, our, our, our picture is going to be up on that wall and, like, a hundred years from now, kids are going to be like, they wore that? Like... <laughs> For now, the only legacy these wildcats stress is getting faster, having fun, and making a group of strangers a true team. That wasn't hard when they learned how easy it was to cheer for each other. We've just gotten to know each other really well and like we've had those difficult times already to like bring us closer to one another. And I think as a first year team, people kind of don't expect that. You're spending so much time with them, you're immediately building relationships and it was so much fun getting to know them and spending time with them. So that's definitely my favorite part. Head coach Larissa Dalrymple wasn't sure exactly what she had in the water year one, but she quickly found out their team chemistry means more than talent. They chatter and they they laugh a lot, like they have fun, and that's, I mean, we really want to create a fun atmosphere because I feel like if you can have fun doing this, you're going to be a better swimmer, athlete, all around person. And one other, not surprising, but pleasant ritual, team bonding between races often takes on deeper meaning. We do a lot of praying together before events. Such a cool like change from a public high school. So I just love seeing the contrast and how we're all Christ-centered. We always pray at the end of practice. It's, it's a good spiritual environment. And we obviously make Christ our center. There are, of course, still races to win, times to beat, and struggles to improve. But every accomplishment sets another bar. And for these Wildcats, the privilege of defining what IWU swimming will be. It's always nice to be first. And it, you, don't, you won't realize how special it is until you leave. Every door is open. And it's all just about us going for it and having fun and just seeing what we can do. Every meet, a new challenge. Every record, a school record. And for Wildcat Swimming, every splash, a fresh start. One team! Wildcats! One team! Wildcats! For Wildcat Week, I'm Rebecca Schrad. Well, who knew Wildcats could swim? Certainly, congratulations to Coach Larissa Dalrymple and the team on a great start and looking forward to some great things ahead. Well, that's all we have for you on this episode of Wildcat Week. If you would like to see more of Wildcat Week, you can visit our website, WIWTV.com. There you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Once again, that's WIWTV.com. And you can stay connected, to, uh, connected with us, all our local programming, by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's WIWTV51. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week, so for all of us here, Thanks for watching.